Well, good morning. Welcome to the live streaming of morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Thursday, the 29th of April, 2021. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is now streamed live exclusively on Zoom. To participate in the live service, go to goodshepvirtual.org and click on prayer and study. Scroll down and you'll find the service leaflet for today's service. Just look for today's date. Immediately above the service leaflet, there is an image of prayer books in the pews. Click on the link to join via Zoom. This service will always be available beginning at 10 a.m. on all of Good Shepherd's communications channels, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, the prayer and study page. So good morning, Carol, great to see you. And good morning, Julie and Pete, great to see you this morning as well. Well, this morning we are going to, during our service, commemorate Catherine of Siena. Catherine uh, is known as a mystic, a contemplative who devoted herself to prayer, as a humanitarian, a nurse who undertook to alleviate the suffering of the poor and the sick, and as an activist, a renewer of church and society, who took a strong stand on the issues affecting society in her day, and who never hesitated in the old Quaker phrase to speak, to speak truth to power. And finally, she was noted as an advisor and a counselor with a wide range of interests who always made time for troubled and, and certain persons who told her their problems, large and trivial, religious and secular. Good morning, Karen. Good to see you as well this morning. Well, the hour is upon us, so why don't we start with this morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this, the 29th of April, 2021. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our invitatory canticle this morning is the Pasha Nostrum, Christ our Passover, which we shall say together in unison. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Good morning, Kathy. Great to see you this morning. And good morning, Debbie. Great to see you too. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 50. And we shall say the psalm together in unison. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, 
God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds and their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky and the creatures of the field are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. But to the wicked, God says, why do you recite my statutes and take my covenant upon your lips? Since you refuse discipline and toss my words behind your back. When you see a thief, you make him your friend, and you cast in your lot with adulterers. You have loosed your lips for evil and harnessed your tongue to a lie. You are always speaking evil of your brother and slandering your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept still, and you thought that I am like you. I have made my accusation. I have put my case in order before your eyes. Consider this well, you who forget God lest I rend you, and there be none to deliver you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, Sherry. Great to see you. Glad you joined us this morning. So our Old Testament reading this morning, we continue from the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, which we find in the Apocrypha. All those things have vanished like a shadow and like a rumor that passes by, like a ship that sails through the billowy water and when it is passed, no trace can be found, no track of its keel in the waves or as when a bird flies through the air, no evidence of its passage is found. The light air lashed by the beat of its pinions and pierced by the force of its rushing flight, is traversed by the movement of its wings, and afterwards no sign of its coming is found there. Or as when an arrow is shot at a target, the air thus divided comes together at once, so that no one knows its pathway. So we also, as soon as we were born, ceased to be and we had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our wickedness because the hope of the ungodly is like thistledown carried by the wind and like a light frost driven away by a storm. It is dispersed like smoke before the wind and it passes like the remembrance of a guest who stays but a day, but the righteous live forever and their reward is with the Lord. The Most High takes care of them. Therefore, they will receive a glorious crown with a beautiful diadem from the hand of the Lord, because with his right hand he will cover them, and with his arm he will shield them. The Lord will take his zeal as his whole armor and will arm all creation to repel his enemies. He will put on righteousness as a breastplate and wear impartial justice 
as a helmet. He will take holiness as an invincible shield and sharpen stern wrath for a sword. And creation will join with him to fight against his frenzied foes. Shafts of lightning will fly with true aim and will leap from the clouds to the target as from a well-drawn bow. And hailstones full of wrath will be hurled as from a catapult. The water of the sea will rage against them and rivers will relentlessly overwhelm them. A mighty wind will rise against them and like a tempest, it will winnow them away. Lawlessness will lay waste to the whole earth and evil doing will overturn the thrones of rulers. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. This morning's Old Testament canticle is number eight in our prayer book, Cantamus Deu, the Song of Moses. And this canticle is very associated with the Easter season. And in fact, it must be said during uh, Easter week. So uh, a very Easter season canticle. So let us say together the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God and I will praise him. The God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In our New Testament reading this morning, we continue with Paul's letter to the Christian community at Colossae, a city in Asia Minor very near Ephesus. So a reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also, you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities 
and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink, or observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died, to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belonged to this world? Why do you submit to regulations, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch? All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humili humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's New Testament canticle is the Gloria in Excelsis, Glory to God. And you'll recall that this is one of the two uh, canticles uh, in our prayer book that is not scriptural. They were uh, this and the Te Deum Laudamus uh, were written uh, in the third, in the fourth century uh, of the common era, the same century that gave us the Council of Nicaea. And uh, these are canticles that we omit during Lent because all the canticles during Lent are scriptural. But now that we are in the Easter season, we can rejoice and uh, say these canticles. So let us say the glory to God together in unison. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The collect for the day is the collect for the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is, of course, Good Shepherd Sunday. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And as I mentioned this morning, we are uh, commemorating uh, Catherine of Siena this morning. She was a reformer and spiritual teacher who died in the year 1380. I, I'm not putting the dates in, in, in the leaflet because I think it's really amazing to see just all those centuries over which people have witnessed to Jesus over the time. So the call it to commemorate Catherine of Siena. Almighty and everlasting God, who kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your servant, Catherine of Siena, grant to us the same strength of conviction and power of love, that as we rejoice in her triumph, we may profit by her example. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and a prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, remembering today especially the, our Orthodox Christian friend, uh, brothers and sisters who today are celebrating Monday, Thursday during Holy Week, being that this coming Sunday is Orthodox Easter. So let us remember them. But we particularly pray for those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Brisbane, Australia, the Most Reverend Dr. Philip John Aspinall, Archbishop and Metropolitan. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate. And our companion diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Toliara, Madagascar. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. 
we pray for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today especially Becky and family, Patricia, Priscilla, Steve, Joey, Julia, our own Bob and Pam, Ashley, Mindy, Bernie, Peter, Joe, Sal and Colleen, Chris, Brooke and family, Jim and Jerry, Debbie, and Jay and family. We pray also for our serve ministries, remembering especially grief share, that those who have suffered the loss of a loved one need not grieve alone, but may know the comfort of others who have suffered such a loss. And our food pantry, that through nourishing the bodies and spirits of our neighbors in need, we may be a beacon of faith, hope, and love in this community. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. As we begin our prayers this morning, uh, I'd like to uh, pray for our youth group that met yesterday. Uh, so let us say the prayer for young persons in our prayer book. God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And let us pray for those who are alone and for their caretakers, remembering especially uh, uh, Lydia and also Pam, who is taking care of Bob. Almighty God, whose son had nowhere to lay his head, grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that following in his steps, they might, might find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. And Debbie gives thanksgiving to God for a successful trip to Jacksonville for Connie's concerns. Not done, but more steps accomplished with amazing ease. So thanks be to God for that. Uh, and let us therefore pray for those whom we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And let us pray for all doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals. And let us particularly remember those uh, who work and live in India, which is undergoing an enormous surge in COVID-19 right now without the resources that they need to tend to all of the sick people who are coming there. So let us pray for doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals in general. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, 
that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And today, as Father Doug and the other clergy of the diocese conclude their uh, clergy conference, which is a time of continuing education and uh, prayer for them, let us pray for a church convention or meeting. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel at the clergy conference of, of the Diocese of Southeast Florida for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us continue with the general thanksgiving, which we shall say together in unison. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for morning prayer on this lovely Thursday morning in April. And as you go out into the world today, as always, remember to be kind to your neighbor when you greet him or her. One never knows what another is going through. Amen.